is you have your you have your role on this by public pressure to make a to get the kids off the corner right, to right. make this difference that they can't. That's My it. kid has nothing to do. He has no job opportunities, no education. We're struggling financially as much as possible. He go, he's going to go deal drugs on the corner. And I've been in uh, caps meetings watching mothers say this: "Go get my kid off the corner." The kids don't go talk your kid off the corner. They go uh, they go arrest him. Yeah. And that's not because they're bad. That's because what they that's what they do. Well, and it's it's true. We just actually had a um, some kind of a big bust a, a block away that they've been working on for a, a while. We always we hear about it after the fact and say it's been something that they were working on for a while to uh, do a big drug bust. And I think it was like eight or twelve people arrested. Um, not finished yet arresting people for this thing, but we don't know, you know. And this is a block away, and. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if if they're getting the bad guys or not. You know, if they're getting kids or if they're getting the real. I hope they're getting big time dealers who are putting kids in harm's way. But well, I let, never know. Let's make one thing clear: that had no impact on the availability of drugs in Rogers Park. <laughs> and the mere yeah, idea that anyone would think that is ridiculous. Well, that's okay. See, that's and what the I alderman feel. on Facebook's talking about it. Ridiculous. Um, local officials talk about it all the time. Ridiculous. There's no impact on drugs. Now, whether or not there's violence around that market, and obviously, community members deserve to be able to walk around their community without having to go through a drug market. Right. So, no one wants that to exist. However, there's got to be some other solution than just arresting them. And we don't have an economic response. Right. We don't have an educational response. Right. Uh, we're That's talking key. with Tracy Siska of the Chicago Justice Project. Tracy, um, let's talk about uh, the superintendent of police, McCarthy. And, uh, you know, he can be very articulate, s talks a good game, uh, but it's in true. a lot of ways some of his practices I think uh, may be questionable. What's your take on him and uh, the work that he's doing? Well, m make no mistake, he's, very, he's a very good politician. Yeah. His first public appearance here was at St. Sabina's talking to Reverend Flager in an all-black community about how he knew about racism and he knew about Jim Crow and he knew about slavery. Yeah, he, he well, really that's wonderful. did appear. Right. And then he went back to the station, had a meeting with his executive officers and his management team and, about instituting, you know, uh, zero tolerance, arrest for everything. So right. is when you were talking just before the show, you were talking about the arrests for marijuana. Right, and, and I think that's been a, I think that whole issue around pot tickets is basically a scam that they've pulled on um, you, uh, on Chicago. You mean first, starting with the city council? Yes. Well, first <laughs> of all, you need to have an ID. If you don't have an ID when they find pot on you, they must arrest. It's right, sort of so like the Mopri and Gawkin laws. A lot of gang members, don't, for, per, for very, a variety of reasons, don't carry IDs. Right. So they ain't getting reduced. Second of all, they said they wouldn't put a debtor's prison in, which means if you don't pay your municipal ticket, because that's what you get if you don't get arrested, then that's just the city deals with it. Now, a, what, a year later, not less, McCarthy yes. has switched on that, which everyone knew he would. And now, if you don't pay your, your administrative ticket, they will go around and they will arrest you. So it's basically a debtor's prison that they promised they wouldn't put in place, and they waited a whole nine months for the press. There was a very small article in the trip because our, our media stinks <laughs> about the fact that we now have a debtor's prison in Chicago. You I, know, like, you, you I like this new angrier tr Tracy, don't you, Michael? I do, too. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, Tracy, you do great work. The Chicago Justice Department does great work pointing projects. these things, projects, <laughs> uh, pointing things out. Um, one of the things you and I were talking about before the show was I had given an example of, that I had learned of where a couple of uh, uh, kids, both were in bands, and had just played a show at one of these garage rock, uh, you know, little venues, and uh, the police came through the alley. Some of the kids were, you know, oh, here come the police, so they were, went back inside. And the kids outside, one of them got busted for uh, what would be a legal uh, jackknife in his pocket on a keychain, I think, and the other one had a, an empty bowl. And both of them, these are white, you know, middle class kids, get, get yes. taken to the joint uh, and arrested. And I just, uh, my first thought was it was really a, uh, not a very good use of police personnel. Uh, but you're saying that this zero tolerance is what's being manifested throughout and it, it reflects decisions that were in policies that would happen in New York City and other places, and was it effective in other places? So. It hasn't, the, the social science behind research behind it has proven it's been, it hasn't been 
effective whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, what everyone has to understand, there's been a huge crime and violence drop in America since the early 90s through mostly today. In New York is one of the greatest examples of that. However, the Giuliani and the most of his police commanders, McCarthy being one of them, took credit for this huge crime drop. Right. The problem with that logic, and it just totally defies logic, is that the, the experiences of New York's crime drop are represented in, um, in Dallas, in Houston, in Seattle, in L.A. It happened all over the country, all at the same time. So either 19,000 different policing agencies with 19,000 different tactics all affected crime the same way, or something else happened in America to impact it. And no one is going to say that there was 19,000 agencies. But people like McCarthy got fame for this big crime drop, so he's starting to spread it. The same tactics that didn't really work. What did happen? You know, there's a lot of theories, and I, you know, I'm, I'm a criminologist. I've got mine, and I'll, I have. There's very little evidence to support it, but Good. during this a time, a non-empirical answer. Yes, totally. Just tell us what you think. Well, we I'm always speak non-empirically, well, like, if I, at all possible. I, I, I have a. I have a resistance to criminologists who say they always know when there's no evidence. So, but during that time period, and we're starting to spike back up, is that we had the lowest population in America of 18 to 35, especially 18 to 25. That population plummeted during that time period. Interesting. So, and those are the most prone crime years. So for that, was, that was that uh, was the that was the women taking care of their bodies in the <laughs> 70s and not getting into pregnancies they didn't want. The economics would agree with you yeah. on that issue. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, one last, uh, we got a, other guests coming up. It's always great talking to you and the, uh, the Chicago Justice Project, uh, learning about what you're doing. I really like the tone of your blog these days. How would people find your blog? And then I really just give us one more little thing on what you think this, what this police ought to do. Okay, well, you can find us, uh, everything you want to know about us, at chicagojustice.org. And our blog's up there, email information, phone, anything you want to get a hold of us. Um, I think it, the most important thing anyone can do is communities could push their politicians for economic answers and not policing answers. Because the more, more the press push the police, the more the public push the police, the more police go out of bounds to respond. So you, you have to also understand that the police are in an untenable position, untenable, sorry, e experience uh, in position because they're getting pushed in caps meaning yeah. to by the press and by everyone and by the aldermen to have a response. And s to some degree that is a little bit of the, there's a little bit of responsibility for that on lays on the community's feet. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. And the um, community policing is, is in dire need of a retrofit, a refit, um, although they said they're... A real fit. Oh, yeah, yes. for the first time, a real fit. You're yeah. right. Um, well, gosh, Tracy, thanks for all the good work you do. One last thing, uh, Tracy, oh. you did. Uh, you mentioned Ben Jarowski and Mick Dumkey as reporters who really have been on the case around the policing issue. Uh, unfortunately, that sometimes the Tribune do not have. Uh, real good reports uh, so I'm just giving a shout out to Dumpkin and Jaroski. right and I'll, uh, I'll we're releasing something on press reporting coming up in May um, and then we'll uh, show you how bad they really are great Bless your uh, how heart. do people get a hold of you chicagojustice.org or at, uh, info at chicagojustice.org again Tracy Siska from Chicago Justice Project doing the important work that no one else is doing and we'll be Shine right back on. with Ami Tyler, her son, and we'll be talking about her parents' art as well as her own. You're listening to Live from the Heartland here on the left end of your dial. We're going to hear a little bit of music.